Singh. Good on you guys. Thank you so much. My name is Raghunath, and uh, like I was introduced, you know, let's get to the topic. Um, we hear this term quite a lot about, you know, we heard about data lakes. Now we are hearing this term called lake house. We are here to talk about kind of define what a lake house is. Sometimes, you know, there are different definitions that different people have. And uh, it, it's quite uh, uh, imperative to understand what's really happening. At the same time, it's not only about certain components, technology components in the industry. Uh, it's not about my slide wave sort of dialogue, but rather get into the nuts and bolts of what these concepts are. And when we say going beyond that, what does that really mean? So, you know, my, uh, my colleague here, my friend is I, I actually meant to say, <laughs> He, he meets with a lot of customers, and uh, he gets a lot of these uh, themes that those are discussed with the customers and prospects. So, Satya, would you want to uh, take us through that, please? Thanks, Raghu. Thanks. So, we interact with a lot of customers and understand a lot of their uh, pains and also some of the initiatives, what they take. So, based on a summary of my interactions with them, so I have jotted down some of the points which I want to present one by one. So most of the companies are looking at data strategy modernizations. Okay, so there were some monolithic applications, legacy applications which have been running from the companies for many years. Now they want to look at microservices, Kubernetes, and most of the investments which are done in hardware, when the tech refresh comes, instead of going for a new hardware replacements, they're looking at hosting on cloud platforms because that is a predictive OPEX model. So these are some of the initiatives which most of the customers are taking. Data silos. So we all resonate with the buzzword these days that a lot of people say data is gold, data is the new oil. So data is very important for most of the organizations. But there has been a pattern which has been observed that most of the data from multiple OLTP, that is transactional systems, are disparately scattered across the organization and collecting them or bringing them to a common pool and getting decision-making abilities or business insights is lacking. So that is one of the points which most of the customers share with me. The next point is expensive data management. Now, so a lot of, I mean, a lot of you must be using a lot of uh, data tools, might be data integration, data warehouse, data lakes, and also data analytic tools. Now. Over the period of time, so a lot of investments have been done in these tools, and uh, but actually if you look at the business impact, are they giving you the ROI? Still, someone who has gone for a data warehouse or data strategy three years, four years back, he's again contacting some of the cloud vendors and seeing that whether I, what I did, is it good, or should I improvise it, and all these things. We all talk about data science, machine learning, I think that is where most of the enthusiasts who are joined in this hall are. Now, actually, machine learning, you use multiple tools and external tools while you're trying to do your existing projects. But the biggest challenge is, are you able to scale your machine learning models at a higher way? So that is a question which customers share with us. Because that is where the concepts of in database machine learning and all these things are going to protect the investments and help customers. While we talk of this new projects, new initiatives, uh, while taking by a lot of chief digital officers, chief information officers, analytics teams, most important thing is there are some regulatory bodies and some policies which you have to govern with. And that's the reason data sovereignty, governance and privacy is of utmost importance whether it might be uh, public cloud or even private cloud. So these are the, some of the audits which companies are regularly gone through, and that is the reason this has to be emphasized. So I have explained the common themes till now, what exactly the customers in the industry are thinking. And if you look at our topic, going beyond data lake house, so even we get into a deep dive, let us understand what is this data lake house architecture and how exactly what are the key features? I request my colleague Raghu to explain it further. Thank you, Satya. So we have been in the industry for a very long time. Right? Like I mentioned, we have been hearing the, all of these small terms, 
but no no one really goes to the depth understanding what it really contributes to so we went to as you can see in the footer there uh, we went to uh, one of our friends website um, like you know i don't call them competitor they are friends uh, because we are here vendors trying to help the customers achieve the success if i don't they would what not anyways let's have a look at some of the components so when someone says that uh, you know we have got uh, a lake house or i call myself a lake house what does that really mean a data store which allows you transaction support meaning that i am able to efficiently load the data do anything with that data okay some transaction supports which is supposedly ac to compliance right now this while i'm giving this access to the users i have to have some method to that madness which is through either traditional schema enforcement through rules and privileges or through some advanced governance as well okay um I'm a data store. I'm supposed to do analytics. Obviously, I need to have a support for BI and analytics on top of it for the standard data that's within the lake house. But also at the same time, there is a lot of streaming data that's coming in. Do I do the analytics after, or do I do it while it's being streamed? But yes, lake house is supposed to do the analytics while it's being streamed. Okay. If you look at the deployment options and architectures. Uh, we have heard about uh, these three Vs for a long time: velocity, veracity, and volume of data. Uh, but what we also realize the fact that having a centralized storage with traditional architectures is not going to give me scalability. Scalability has got different aspects. One is your storage scalability or storing scalability. Other one is serving scalability. Now that's the reason the need for separation of compute storage that came in, so that the customers can actually grow. if they have big data requirement yeah absolutely they could get grow on the storage but at the same time if they have concurrency requirements they can grow on the compute separately without having to be dependent one of the another feature of uh, data warehouse and of course you know you are connecting to variety of different systems every system has been you know built for something and it has got different types of data so when you receive that data that's actually in different shapes and forms so a platform should be have you know a lake house should have a, you know um, openness towards any of those formats okay but if you look closely now like if you try to group these components together you would realize that you can group them in such a way that some of the tasks if you they were actually being done by a data enterprise data warehouse in the past some of it was being done by a data lake so lake, data lake's general understanding at the moment is that a the lake house is com uh, it's basically understanding is that it's a combination of both of them mm, anyways i i don't have any slides here at the moment uh, but um this is blank this is on blank no problem we get we'll get extra time from me anyways okay. that's fine don't worry about it don't worry about it so we have understood the basic blocks of what a lake house data lake house is okay let's have a look at um because you know we didn't want to do slides at all we wanted to kind of do a bit of white boarding so that we can get into the nuts and bolts so what satya mentioned some time ago about what those themes were and you know what's really happening at the customer end would you want to take us through that yes well? raghu thanks for that so uh, instead of presenting a generic slides we thought we will do a, a simple whiteboarding uh, like as if we are presenting and we'll go through each point wise okay so this is again to the continuation of the themes which i explained in the first slide so we have lot of customers uh, who are evaluating new business initiatives new projects revamping or upgrading their data strategies modernization of applications modernization of databases and infrastructure so across public cloud platforms private cloud platforms now there is also they want to create a data mesh around it at the same time every analytics leaders or data science leaders they need to show some tangible benefits to the company that is where the finance is involved whenever the new initiatives are there we talk about the word called roi so it is very important how you get the returns now why exactly they need to do this these companies have to adopt this policies this framework because there are a lot of companies growing lot of startups which are coming day by day and companies need to be disruptors with time to market lesser time to market and also with reduced cost at the same time 
by doing all this, give a greater customer experience platform. While all these parameters are very critical, so again, security and governance uh, follows us everywhere. So that has to be intact, surrounding at every application, database, middleware, or infra platform. So there's a lot of data which gets appending into a data lake house or data warehouse, whoever have built it, from multiple transactional systems, might be HRMA system, finance system, or any third party applications, or a lot of, you also use Excel sheets, where you use still Excel CSVs to show some analysis and dashboards to the management. Now, though there are a lot of tools, though there are data is disparated, and the actual business benefit is lacking. So that is where we thought we will address this point. And now, Raghu, can you exactly explain in the next whiteboarding platform, like how exactly these points can be addressed? Absolutely. So, you know, if we talk about these data puddles or data that's acquired over a period of time, where does it necessarily reside, okay? Uh, first is traditional star schema uh, databases, like, you know, they have been uh, there for a long time and people are still capturing there. Last few years, we customers have been storing the data into data lakes as well, some of the data lakes which are obsolete now, but there's still there are plenty of data lakes which are, for example, Hadoop. Some of them actually storing it in cloud into you know, your buckets, uh, you know, community, communal storage. Uh, some of them actually uh, storing on-premise as well, you know, because there are certain regulations, for example. Some of them are even more advanced where they're storing the data into uh, edge services because that's what their business needs. They want to analyze at the edge. What Vertica does is basically the strategies that Satya mentioned. Vertica does changing your data strategies into and converting that into an intelligent pipeline. Okay, and we'll see how that pipeline is built. Vertica basically, with Vertica, like you have those data puddles which are lying there built over a period of time, you could decide to move the data towards Vertica, more towards real time, okay? And having an ability from one store, you have moved it to Vertica, do what you would do with it, and we'll, we'll cover that what can be done with it, um, and then ability to push it back to a, the same store or any other store, that's point number one. What do we do with that data? So we basically transform that data. We'll have to transform that, we have to first of all, we might have to deduplicate, as, as you would know, so the duplication would be happening in those, in those stores. Uh, we would probably, there'll be some missing data where you'll have to do some gap filling interpolation. You would probably have to do some correlation of data because you're superimposing data from a variety of different places. So all those things can be done. Vertica also organizes uh, the data into a columnar fashion primarily for cost benefits, because the disk footprint would be much lesser if, if the data is columnarized. But at the same time, while the data is columnarized, you can compress it using advanced compression units. Uh, I, I wouldn't call it compression because technically it, does, it is not right. Encoding is the right word. But that encoding also gets you a lot of performance benefits, because when we encode slash compress the data, and when we run analytics on it, we do not have to decompress it we run it on that encoded data itself. And that brings in a lot of performance benefits. Next one is very, very interesting. We have got a lot of, uh, we have got a lot of uh, built-in, 700 plus built-in advanced analytic functions within the database. Uh, what it means is that you can, if you want to do standard analytics, that's fine. If you want to do, um, basically, if you want to do uh, uh, things such as uh, uh, geospatial analytics, Vertica has got complete geospatial module built inside it based on open geospatial consortium. Okay, if you want to do some time series analytics, you want to do event series analytics, you want to do windowing function, you want to do pat pattern matching, text search, all of it built inside Vertica. And more importantly is that who could use it? Anyone really, because we had been a tradition of language, we have had tradition of language, SQL language. So whether you are a newbie SQL developer or an experienced SQL developer, uh, you could use all of those ready-made functions without having to develop a uh, code. Next thing is Vertica is also a query engine. So let's say if you decide that, hey, look, I like my data puddles, uh, but uh, you know I don't want to store in Vertica. Uh, Vertica is also a thin query engine as well. You could decide to kind of use that query engine to go and connect to these data sources 
without having to move the data into Vertica, you can analyze that in, in place, okay? Or alternatively, we have got feature called flex tables by which you could, um, you know, uh, uh, look at that data using external table features and decide what fields that I want to bring inside, okay? To kind of, you know, save cost or whatnot, okay? At this stage, most of the customers are using this uh, with Vertica. At this stage, they assume that they have got an actionable insight, okay? And if you remember now the, um, the lake house slides that I've shown, this is where the definition of a lake house actually ends. Looking at multiple uh, sides of data, having schema enforcement, governance around it, having analytics being done on top, having an open architecture allowing you to uh, do a lot of things with it, that's where the definition ends. And hence, the topic of this today's session starts, as in we go beyond that because we provide you in database uh, machine learning. The database that comes with all of those analytical functions plus machine learning algorithms, okay? Uh, we have got our own algorithms, but at the same time, we are open to anything that you have written and incubate that within the database and run it as a database function. So what's happened really here is that you develop, you generated actionable insight. Now that curated actionable insight can be fed to a model. We all know standard rule, right? You know, no matter how good the model is, garbage in, garbage out. You need to pass in right data to get right results. So a data scientist now can basically use that curated data. We, what we have observed in the industry is that 80% of the time that the data scientists spend is on data exploration, data preparation, and probably even data cleansing as well before the model could be decided. We el eliminate that time because we have got those functions to do that even before it is fed to the model automatically. Now the data scientists basically can use uh, uh, this data to train their model. I'm, I must talk about this uh, uh, another module called Vertica Pi. This was developed way back with Uber. Uber is a big customer. Um, and it was developed way back with Uber's engineering team and our engineering team. Uh, Uber has, uh, by the way, they have got 40 petabytes of Vertica license. And they basically, they had 25 odd data scientists back then. And they obviously loved Vertica for its speed, but hated as well at the same time because they didn't like SQL and they loved Python. And hence we came together saying, hey, we need to have that efficiency of Vertica and easy, easiness of Python. So we came together and developed, a, it's, a, it's an open source library, um, and now we own it and we run with it. But that library basically allows you to visually interact with the data, okay? So you, you want to do some correlations, you want to have a look at, uh, you know, some certain charts, elbow curves, correlation matrices, anything that you want to do can, is possible. At the same time, you can throw some of the curated data to VerticaPy AutoML. The AutoML will basically tell you which model, whether it's a classification problem, whether it's a regression problem, whether it's a clustering problem, and suggest you right algorithm. As in, again, it's freedom is up to you what to choose, because it will show you which one is the performant one and which one is the better one in terms of accuracy or confidence level, all of that. So it will basically, you don't have to necessarily uh, do that yourself, you have got AutoML functions as well. Now, with that, you can basically, uh, with the data, with the actionable insight that you got, you could actually train your model, you could test your model, and you could score your model within the database, okay? The next point is, okay, my model is ready, which is trained across 100% of my data. Now, if you see, most of the uh, data scientists basically spend a lot of time doing uh, operationalization of, of these models. And they spend probably about 10% of the time. Now, out of the actionable insight, I've got the model running. I've got, I've achieved my wisdom, which is the next level. But I spend, also spend about 10% of my time doing, uh, uh, you know, deployment of that model. Most of these models usually fail because they are trained outside the production data or outside the 100% data. A small sample of data is fed to the model and we expect that to be successful in the 100% data and that's where, more, unfortunately, most of them fail. Whereas in this case, we have already trained the model on all the data, so the failure obviously is taken out. Now these outcomes from actionable insights or the wisdom can be fed to your you know, BI apps or you know, uh, any other services straight in. And that's what we call unified analytics. 
you worked on all of your data across all of your puddles, you transformed it, you made it efficient, you derived, using those built-in analytic functions, you derived an actionable insights, you fed that actionable insights into uh, machine learning, got your wisdom or your outcomes, so you're looking at 100% data and complete cycle through the data science. It doesn't really stop there. From a uh, deployment perspective, we have developed our own Kubernetes operator, which basically provides you with auto-healing sort of capabilities as well. Okay? It, does, it does also uh, mean that you know, these outcomes can be fed. We have got a Kafka connector. These outcomes can be straight away fed to a Kafka bus to do things such as you know, start, stop. You have certain, for example, I don't know, you might have a promotion on and you want to do some certain things based on an outcome of a machine learning algorithm. Absolutely, yes. You can feed that to even an edge device as well. This is all, all about the components, right? But why do people really choose Vertica? It's primarily because of our concurrency. It's not only about storage, like I was saying, you know, it's not only about storage scalability, but also concurrent scalability. Thousands of users, imagine, I can't name a biggest social, uh, uh, social media application or website, whatever they want to call it. They use um, our, our app to our, our data to basically calculate the which ad to be pushed onto which, uh, onto which user. Millions of users across the globe, and they do that real time for obviously for revenue. Think about Uber. Uber, so many drivers, and you know, every country base they have got servers. So, th concurrency for across not only hundreds, but thousands of users is, is our specialty. Obviously, we have got built in integrated security. So, if you have got any GDPR or compliance related requirements, those can be met as well. Vertica is also about choice. Whether some certain customers would be compute oriented, where their workload is primarily based on compute. Some of them could be storage oriented. We have got licenses, or the other way around, or they may have a hybrid need. We, are, we have got licensing methods for both of them. Some customers these days, subscription has been a, a, high, a you know, high need for most of the customers. Um, obviously, we provide subscription as well. Some of them, like especially government, where they believe in CapEx and owning the license, we provide a perpetual license as well. So certain customers, if you see there's a big amount of drive to, to the cloud, customers may want to actually run their, their, their database or analytics platform onto the cloud. Yes, we support that. Bring your own li license and self-service. But if you want to do a fully managed uh, service, we, we do that as well. If you have certain data sovereignty issues and you cannot actually go to the cloud and want to remain on, on premise, absolutely we support that as well. If you want a hybrid approach, we can do that as well. And these are the primary reasons a lot of the customers basically uh, choose us. And maybe Satya, if you could take us through some of those examples. I'll sure, Rago. So let me give you some of the examples of our customers who have deployed Vertica successfully and how they got the returns in terms of the customer satisfaction. The first example I want to talk about a large automobile company, so which is into autonomous cars. So this company does a lot of crash testing because when you say autonomous, it drives on its own, right? Self-repairing, self-driving, it, it is automatic. So for that, safety is very important factor. So while they have designed this prototype, so, and in production phases. So they have installed 500 sensors where so many data points comes from these cards and crash testing so that a simulation exercises are done. And all these things are stored in Vertica and analyzed in Vertica, thereby saving the passenger's safety. The second example which I want to talk about is uh, Philips. So we all know Philips is one of the largest medical equipment manufacturing company in the world. Now, these machines are deployed in so many hospitals across the world. And if we even, we all go for CT scan, MRI scan, or any of the scans, okay? So we need these equipments to be intact and working in all the diagnostics labs and hospitals. So there is zero failure of these platforms at these hospitals. So that is the reason predictive maintenance is a very important factor. And most of the predictive maintenance capabilities is done by Vertica at Philips. The third example 
I want to talk about is Trade Desk. Most of you must be aware of the name Trade Desk. It is one of the largest advertising technology company in the world, where they run on Vertica 10 million ads per second. 10 million ads per second. And this is actually helping him, helping the customers in doing the customer profiles or push services and also get a lot of returns from the ad revenue. So I thought these are some of the examples uh, which we'll explain you. So before, I want you to just have a snapshot of this in your mind because the next slide which we are presenting it to you, it talks about how Vertica architecture maps to what we have drawn here. Okay, so a quick snapshot. And Raghu, can you please take us through the Vertica architecture in detail? Absolutely. Uh, I personally like calling it a architecture. Previous slides are better for me. I'm a technical person. But it kind of puts uh, you know, certain components, some name to those components to make it a bit more relative. So on the left, far left side, as you would imagine, there would be source systems which are in place and you know, capturing a lot of data. And then you have got your transformations and ETL tools, which are basically fetching that information into your heart of your system, right? Okay, your analytics platform. And on the right hand side, um, you have got all those visualization tools, which are democratizing visualization, okay? They are definitely helping all these analytics is taken uh, to the user in a meaningful manner, okay? On the ground, if you see there, those are all deployment platforms all the popular clouds that you talk about, you, if you have made an investment to Hadoop and you want, me, want it to go a bit, bit faster, absolutely that can be done using a lot of things and would be happy to, happy to answer them. If you want to do object store on cloud, yep. Yeah. Object store on premise, yes, why not? If you want to keep on premise any, any sort of CPU architecture, we are there. I just want to touch up uh, on, on, on this because this is the differentiator with Vertica, which goes beyond a lake house. These are, and more, of course, um, these are the uh, you know, functions that we have supporting entire life cycle of a data science, okay? Maybe it data preparation, data exploration, modeling, or it's to do with, you know, you want to do your scoring and, you know, evaluate your models, or even, obviously, if you want to deploy those models. And I'm not saying that we say that, oh, I eat my own cooking, like, you know, you have to eat our own models. No. If you have developed certain code within R or Python, C++, Java, whatever that you have written need not to be thrown. We can bring that inside Vertica and run as a database function, okay? Reusability of your code and, and intelligence. This is a bit of a chest thumping for me. I, I love this slide because um, it basically shows uh, you know, how varied our customers are. Out of the 5,000 plus customers that we have, they are from different fields, very smart uh, farming against transportation, against healthcare, um, against, you know, cybersecurity. All of these are really big customers. Auckland Transport is my favorite because um, I'd been involved from day one on, on, uh, with that customer, doing a lot of smart things with regard to transportation. Um, and with that, uh, thank you so much, everyone. We will 